I thought it'd be good to come out here and check out some of these tide pools. See if maybe there's uh, anything interesting I want to set up on, or at least just check out the conditions. It is super bright out here though. It, the lighting is pretty harsh, so I'm not sure about that right now anyway. There's all manner of cool little sea critters in here though, from hermit crabs and starfish and anemones. And one of the challenges with shooting this too is uh, not sure the tides coincide with when I'd have the kind of light that I want out of this. I'm kind of trying to pay attention to see when high and low tide is. Seems like about the time the sun's going down or it's getting soft lighting, um, it's been high tide. If I get sick of shooting trees, maybe I'll come back here and try to set some up. But for right now, I think I'm gonna move on. Something that keeps happening to me is uh, I don't have quite ideal conditions. Although I want to stay productive. And there's a drive and a little bit of pressure to stay productive because I'm only here for a few days, you know, and I want to make the most of it. But without the ideal conditions, I end up going into kind of reactive mode instead of like carefully planning out and like lining up a composition and then waiting for the like because I'm not really intimately familiar with my surroundings that I'm working in. Uh, so I'll see light that looks really good and then I'll just quickly try to react to it and set the camera up. And almost every case it doesn't work because what's going on is I'm working in these forests and I keep getting these rays of light coming through. And by the time I get the camera set up and focused, the light's completely changed and it's gone or something. So that just happened to me just now. And then on top of that, because the conditions aren't quite ideal, I'm getting more ambitious with my compositions, trying to get creative and I end up setting on something that's like a real technical challenge. So, you know, I'm trying to like Move the plane of focus all the way across, you know, some huge wedge in my composition, you know, because I got a foreground object that's way close. And then I'm like trying to use lens dis distortion to help me out and like create this unique perspective that's really low to the ground or something like that. And it's basically I'm setting up compositions that are more ambitious than my skill level is at operating the camera, I think. So both of those things just happened to me here. The sun's going down. Uh, I wanted to use the last, you know, couple hours of remaining light, the best of my ability. So I came down to, you know, a trail that I've done several times now, just because I was familiar with it. And I saw some really cool light on the side of the tree. I set my view camera up on it. And I thought, you know, what I'm going to do is just like make the most out of just shooting the light with this. And then by the time I got out of the focusing cloth, it was gone. So you put all this hard work into setting up the camera and now I'm inclined to shoot it, you know, but the element that made me stop and set up on it is gone. So it's a real battle of the self internally to want to, it just doesn't make sense to. On another note, uh, the forest is back lit beautifully. I was kind of hoping that maybe I'd get lucky and the light would come back as the sun keeps going down. looks like a beautiful sunset, but I'm nowhere near a viewpoint to see it. I can just see the effects of it coming through the forest. It's gorgeous. Might just be one of them situations where you just kind of enjoy the show. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Couldn't just sit there and watch. I had to try to shoot it. <laughs> so, light never was gonna come back on that composition I was set up on. So I quickly threw the camera up with the 150 millimeter lens and pointed towards the sun, uh, setting the background behind all the trees. I focused for the trees. Didn't worry about the sun in the background or the sky. Um, it's gonna blow out. It's the same thing I did last night. So it's a backlit scene with a, probably gonna have a starburst in it too. Actually, there was two exposures that I took, both on Kodak Ektar 100, color negative film. The first one is definitely gonna have the sun blowing out in the background. The second one, the sun was going down behind a bank of clouds out in the ocean. So it was still lighting up orange in the center of the frame, but it didn't quite have the intensity. So it actually ended up being a longer exposure too. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between the two of them. The first shot I took at F32 was a minute and six seconds. Now there's ferns in the foreground, I didn't even worry about them. I just focused for the distance, like pretty much infinity focus, uh, the farthest trees in the background. 
I could see the twigs like where it was backlit by the sun. I just focused on that. Didn't even worry about the foreground because there's a breeze in here. So the whole time the ferns are moving around, the tree limbs are moving around. There's gonna be a lot of motion blur in this. The second shot, it's gonna be even worse because it was two minutes, 39 seconds. There's additional stop of light plus reciprocity adjustments. So I don't know what to expect on this. This is, could be a horrible, terrible failure. Uh, because it was a very much reactive shot. So I don't have a lot of high hopes for this one, but hey, I had a try. So. so here's the first shot on Ektar. This composition is pretty much the same thing I shot the night before, which would be one or two videos ago. It even has the sunburst, um, and I think it turned out pretty good. The star looks great. The exposure, I'm not so sure about. It's pretty dark right here. So I don't think I exposed quite as well as I did uh, the previous night. Um, I'm not sure why that is, if I just metered this differently or if I just messed up my calculations, but I don't have quite, quite as much detail on this one as I did on the previous night. This one is the first shot. It's shot just, I think it's a minute and six seconds. And then there was a second one that was uh, like two and a half minutes long, another stop or so. And this one doesn't have the sunburst in it, but there is a lot of light coming right here in the center of the scene. That sky's really bright. I'm not actually sure what I think about either of these shots, to tell you the truth. I think I was really happy with the one that I got the night before. This one, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's going to be any better than the one that I shot already, but I guess we'll find out once I get it inverted. The thing that stands out to me immediately is the ferns are just moving all over. There's a lot of motion blur in this. As far as motion blur goes, I'm kind of on the fence about this. So I've seen a lot of back and forth lately uh, talking about, you know, nature moves. It's kind of the, the common catchphrase. While I agree with that, I won't necessarily trash a photo just because it's got motion blur in it. Although this is a lot. This is more than I would kind of prefer. I think for me, there is an acceptable threshold for how much motion blur I'm willing to accept. This is, this is pushing what I think is acceptable for me. My honest opinion is I think I got better shots out of this trip, but I'll show you the finished photo anyway and uh, you let me know what you think. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for me tonight. I'm gonna pack the camera up again and head back towards camp, make myself some dinner. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up because that'll really help the channel out and I'd really appreciate it. Uh, maybe while you're down there, if you wanna see more from me, consider subscribing and ring my bell if you wanna be notified when I release new videos. Take care and I'll catch you in the next video.